Hello everyone, this is a frog, also known as acetic acid, and in this video I am going to be showing my updated home chemistry lab, and I will be explaining how to get many chemicals for a home lab at reasonable cost. Many people are under the assumption that it's difficult or impossible to get many chemicals for a home lab, particularly without drawing the attention of local law enforcement. However, I am going to be showing that this is, does not have to be the case and that it is very possible to get many chemicals at reasonable cost. We begin with hydrochloric acid. It is sold in 10.2 molar concentration under names such as muriatic acid. It sees use as a heavy duty toilet bowl cleaner, a concrete etchant, and a pH lowering chemical and chlorinating agent for swimming pools. It is sold very cheaply for about $5 a gallon. I have moved it from its plastic container into a PVC coated glass bottle for safer long term storage. It is kept by itself because its fumes are highly corrosive to many materials in their containers. We continue to the rest of the acids. On the far right is sulfuric acid, sold to the amateur as Rudo Professional Drain Opener. This is a 17.9 molar aliquot that is sold at Ace Hardware for the purpose of drain cleaning. It appears brown on camera because it is viewed through a very thick layer. However, when used conventionally in beakers and flasks, it, it exhibits no color and is essentially colorless. It is in a glass bottle with a PVC coating and a yellow cap for easier and safer storage. Next to it is the similar chemical sodium bisulfate, which is sold in many places such as Walmart as a pH lowering chemical. It is a safe alternative to muriatic acid because it does not give off fumes which are a respiratory hazard. In this brown bottle is a 3% solution of hydrofluoric acid sold under such brand names as Wink Rust Stain Remover. Next to it is oxalic acid dihydrate which is sold by Ace Hardware as a wood bleacher. In the, applicator, in the bottle with an applicator tip at the back is boric acid. This is sold as a roach killer under several brand names and occasionally by name. The large bottle contains food grade vinegar which is about 5% or 0.87 molar. This is safe for consumption and generally has sugars and many other impurities in it. If pure acid is desired, one should purchase top job cleaning vinegar from places such as Walmart. This is marketed as an environmentally friendly way to clean, and the concentration is about the same as the food grade vinegar, although it is much purer because it does not have sugars and whatnot. Concentrated acetic acid can be purchased online from biodiesel suppliers, as can formic acid, phosphoric acid, and citric acid. Citric acid can also be purchased from many grocery stores as sour salt. Next we move on to bases. I store carbonates, bicarbonates, and hydroxides in ammonia here currently. We begin with baking soda, which is sold in very large sizes to increase alkalinity and pH in swimming pools, and also small sizes for food use. This is Potassium carbonate, which is very hygroscopic and is sold as a solution, is a pH raising chemical for spas. This is washing soda, which is similar to baking soda, although it is sodium carbonate instead of bicarbonate. This is copper 2 carbonate, which is produced by mixing copper sulfate and baking soda in stoichiometric amounts. This is calcium carbonate, which is produced by mixing calcium hydroxide and sodium bicarbonate in stoichiometric amounts. This is calcium hydroxide, which is sold at grocery and hardware stores as pickling lime, which is a food product. Sodium hydroxide is sold under many different brand names as Rudo Crystals of Household Lye, Robic crystal drain opener, and in the back, Drano also contains sodium hydroxide. It is generally approximately $10 per kilogram. This is janitorial strength ammonia, which is 10% by weight. We now move on to oxidizers, of which I have the most chemicals. 
This is potassium nitrate, which is sold as a stump remover under brand names like Greenlight and Spectracide. It's generally impure, so a recrystallization is recommended if you want to get pure potassium nitrate. This is ammonium nitrate, which is found in instant cold packs. One must cut the pack open, remove the ammonium nitrate granules, and get rid of the water pack to use it as a solid. This is sodium nitrate. It is produced by mixing sodium hydroxide and ammonium nitrate in stoichiometric amounts and then evaporating off the water. Again, it's slightly impure as is, so a recrystallization is recommended. This is manganese dioxide obtained from batteries. Six volt batteries contain four cells, each of which contain large amounts of manganese dioxide in addition to some zinc and carbon. In the back is potassium permanganate, sold at Ace Hardware in large quantities to filter water with. It generally costs about $36 for 5 pounds of potassium permanganate. This is calcium hypochlorite, which is sold at pool and hardware stores as a chlorination agent. It is 73% calcium hypochlorite by weight and is one of the strongest oxidizers known. This is potassium peroxymonosulfate, which is an oxidizer for use in spas. This is drugstore hydrogen peroxide of 3% concentration. It is generally pure enough for use, although it does not have although it is not a very high concentration. It can be used to show off the decomp it, it can decompose when exposed to manganese dioxide, although it is not as impressive and does not have as many applications as 27% hydrogen peroxide, which is here. This is sold at pool supply companies as a shock which does not have chlorine in it. A shock that does have chlorine in it is sodium hypochlorite seen here. This is typical laundry bleach, although that is only of 10% concentration, 6% concentration, and this is of 10% concentration. Therefore, it is stronger and is recommended for use in swimming pools. We continue with flammable materials and metals. This is methyl ethyl ketone, which is a ketone sold at hardware stores in the paint section. This is acetone, which can be purchased from hardware stores, although it is cheaper from pharmacies as nail polish remover. This is hydrazine sulfate, which I purchased online for an experiment involving luminol. This is metallic copper, which can be purchased from various sources. I got mine as pipe fittings from Home Depot. This is lithium, which I got from a Ultimate Lithium AA battery, and I'm storing under mineral oil in a vial. This is sulfur, which is purchased from gardening stores. Aluminum can be gotten from crushed up, ground down Coke cans, or as aluminum foil, which is very cheap and worth buying. Magnesium is sold as camping sticks at Walmart and other places. One must scrape magnesium shavings off of the stick before they are ignited when they are used. This is zinc, which I got from the cells of a 6 volt battery as explained earlier. These contain carbon, which are also from the same 6 volt battery. This is steel wool, which is a very cheap source of iron. It is sold at places such as Ace Hardware for various jobs. This is toluene, which is sold in the paint section of hardware stores for various uses. This is glycerin. It can be sold at Walmart and other similar places, and it is generally used as a hand protectant for cold weather and whatnot. This is brake fluid sold in the automotive section of Walmart as well as other places. I prefer the dot four because for my experiment it has a higher boiling point. My alcohols include methanol, ethanol, and isopropanol. Methanol can generally only be purchased online in pure form, although it is contained in wipe windshield wiper fluid and other similar things as a denaturant. 
This is Everclear, which can be purchased from alcohol stores at a rather hefty cost. It is pure ethanol. This is isopropanol, which can be sold at pharmacies. It is sold as a disinfectant, and it's sold in, 90, in 70 and 91% concentrations. Finally are my less reactive chemicals. This is sodium acetate, which I produced from mixing the cleaning vinegar shown earlier and baking soda in stoichiometric amounts. A common experiment with it is the hot ice demonstration when it is at a saturated solution. This is mineral oil, which is sold at pharmacies to relieve constipation, although it also has various other uses in different products, such as baby oil and instrument bore oil. This is distilled water in the back. It is sold at many grocery stores, and if it's pure enough to be used for chemistry, it will say it serves distilled water uses. I generally boil my distilled water before using the rest of it to drive off dissolved CO2 as it is stored. In the back is sugar, which is just sucrose. The same stuff that is used for food can also be used for various chemistry experiments, such as dehydration, dehydration through sugar, through sulfuric acid. Uh, my sulfates include copper 2 sulfate pentahydrate, which is root kill. This is a drain product sold at Lowe's and Home Depot. Also, I have magnesium sulfate heptahydrate, which is magnesium sulfate with seven water. This is sold at various pharmacies such as Walgreens and it has various clinical uses. This is potassium sulfate which I synthesized myself using potassium nitrate and some sulfate. A recrystallization is recommended before I use this as you can tell it's a very significant red tint. And now I have various other chemicals. This is sodium fluoride, which I made by mixing sodium hydroxide and the hydrofluoric acid rust remover in specific proportions. These are chlorides, and this is sodium chloride, which is just table salt. This is potassium chloride, which is sodium free salt. These are sold in food parts of the grocery store. This is calcium chloride, which is damp rid moisture absorber refill. Don't worry about buying the full damp rid kit, just buy the refill because it's all that has the calcium chloride. It's generally very cheap and I actually use it for its intended purpose of being a desiccant as well as being a chemical reactant. This is a bromide starter which I bought from a pool supply company. It contains very pure sodium bromide, although it's rather expensive costs about $40 to get 4 pounds of it. And that concludes my tour on how to get chemicals on the cheap at home. If you have any questions, please leave a comment and subscribe.